Segment five, our final segment, points of inflection. Michael Barone in 2010, quote, to oh. oversimplify, <laughs> comma, to oversimplify, then you make a wonderful point. The economic distress of the 1930s convinced most Americans that markets didn't work very well and that government did. The economic distress of the 1970s convinced most Americans that government didn't work very well and that markets did. In this view, the 1930s produced a natural democratic majority for a long generation. And the 1970s produced a natural Republican majority for a long generation. It may be time for another inflection point. Close quote. Is it? Um, turns out not, um, I think. And I think we can say that pretty conclusively. I mean, the, Oh, really? Okay, good. The Lay polling, out the case. Well, this in is that an, introduction this is of the Almanac of American Politics, which in 2010, thinking. which I was writing in the spring of 2009, um, I, you know, I feel an obligation in this book to present all the descriptions of members of Congress in neutral tones, to talk about pub issues in neutral terms. I don't want to use the term reform for any position. Let's have a more neutral term rather than one that seems to indicate approval. And I wanted to give, you know, a fair hearing to the idea that the Obama administration, and Barack Obama got a higher percentage of the vote than any other Democratic nominee in history except Andrew Jackson, Franklin Roosevelt, and Lyndon Johnson, uh, might be part of a permanent running majority, as James Carville and others have been predicting. Uh, and I think what's happened is that the Obama Democrats' assumption that economic distress would make Americans more supportive of or amenable to big government programs has pretty clearly turned out to be wrong. I mean, we've been faced with a big expansion of government in health care and the stimulus package and all sorts of domestic programs and running the auto companies, bank, and so forth, uh, financial regulation. And... Uh, and voters have really uh, been against these policies pretty strongly. In the, uh, in the election in November, the Obama-Pelosi-Reed impulse to expand the state will be A, counterbalanced, or B, repudiated. Counterbalanced. And we'll see how effective uh, Republicans are. I mean, some uh, Democrats and perhaps some commentators who are not Democrats are saying, well, look, once the re if the Republicans get in and start cutting things, that will be terribly unpopular. I'm inclined to disagree with that, but I don't feel sure that that's the case, you know. And the Democrats are out attacking Paul Ryan's roadmap, which is a, uh, a set of proposals to reduce the growth of entitlements and to get, you know, the federal budget into balancing over the very, over the long term of the several decade type period. Uh, the Democrats apparently feel that those proposals might prove to be unpopular if, um, and, and a lot of Republicans have been wary. But you're arguing about against embracing, your own instincts now, aren't you? Uh, embracing it. If I had to bet $1,000, I would bet that the cuts tend to be popular. I, I, I look at the UK where cuts are popular. I look at Governor Mitch Daniels of, uh, of Indiana, who won re-election in, in 2008, state that Barack Obama was carrying with a turnout that was favorable to Obama, with a lot of young people, black voters, newly entering the electorate to vote Democratic. Mitch Daniels won 58 to 40. He got a higher percentage in the state's most affluent county than Ronald Reagan did in 1984. He carried 25 percent of votes among blacks and 37 percent among Latinos. He won young voters 51 to 42. Um, after a four-year period of sort of skinflint government. Uh, that says to me, that's fragmentary evidence, perhaps, but evidence that uh, a serious um, public policy of reducing government expenditure and employment, of uh, changing the delivery of public services in important ways, uh, can prove to be uh, popular and effective uh, and among an electorate that was voting that same day for Barack Obama. Last question, large question, Michael. <clears throat> essay question. Henry Luce published a famous essay in 1941 entitled The American Century. Bear that title in mind as I quote you to yourself one more time. Uh -oh. This is Michael Barone writing in 2010. Franklin Roosevelt and Ronald Reagan both seemed to turn the economy around. They led the nation to magnificent victories over Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. Today, it is possible to imagine that the American economy, economy may recover sharply. It is much more difficult to imagine how the United States can emerge as brilliantly successful 
against the Islamist terrorists and the Iranian mullahs who wish our destruction, close quote. The 21st century will not be a second American century? Well, I think, we, I, think, I think it will be a second American century. I, in the introduction to my 1990 Almanac of American Politics, I, call, I, I, I entitled that the American Half Century. And I played off Henry Luce's 1941 um, American Century editorial, which is actually very similar to the liberal Democratic Vice President Henry Wallace's Century of the Common Man. As Luce pointed out, their ideas were sort of similar, that America was going to lead. America had an obligation to lead the world towards democracy, towards freedom, towards prosperity through some combination of market capitalism and safety net provisions. And that uh, you, the Luce wasn't so much predicting as urging his fellow citizens to support. This was before American entry into World War II. Uh, and I think we, this century, this half, first half century of the 21st century can be uh, a second half of the American century, if you will. But that's an elegiac you, tone on which you, you close this quote, this, the introduction to this 2010 edition of the Almanac. I think, I think one of the problems is, is that, uh, you know, this is a war in which, as both Presidents Bush and Obama have said, uh, it's hard to determine exactly what victory is. There's not a moment of surrender on the USS Missouri. Uh, there's not a moment like when the first President Bush met Gorbachev on Governor's Island and, uh, and it was Bush and Ra Reagan and Bush and so forth, Governor's Island with the World Trade Center and Wall Street in the background and sort of capitalism won. December 88, this was before the fall of the wall, but obviously anticipated it that, that capitalism had won. That's the scene at which I end my book, um, Our Country, The Shaping of America from Roosevelt to Reagan. Um, you know, those were dramatic moments. Uh, I don't think we see, you know, it's not the same kind of enemy, it's not the same kind of struggle. And, uh, you know, absent, um, you know, a conversion by Osama bin Laden, uh, we're not going to see the same kind of, uh, the same kind of inspirational ending. Last question, and this is a question I have to slip in because I just can't not ask the question. Do Republicans in November recapture control of the House of Representatives and, as some are beginning to wonder, the Senate? Uh, probably the House, probably not the Senate, but you never have control of the Senate. You might have a majority. <laughs> All right. Michael Barone, editor for four decades now. Published in 1972, published in 2000, published in 1972, but covering 1970, published in 2010, of the Almanac of American Politics. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Peter. I'm Peter Robinson for Uncommon Knowledge. Thanks for joining us.